So, throughout my next video, I'm going to talk about the two terms, nature and nurture, and how they can affect an athlete's progression through a talent pathway. These two terms are used widely throughout the world of sport and can cause some confusion into actually what they're going to mean. So, throughout this video, we're going to specifically focus on these two terms, nature and nurture. Nature can cause a debate as our athletes born to be elite athletes or can the amount of practice and dedication turn them into elite and elite athlete and throughout this video we're going to explore these two terms. Davids and Baker suggested in 2007 that the nature nurture debate concerns the extent to which an individual is an individual is a product of her slash his genes or environment generating questions over the role of genes and environmental influences and experience in a range of human behavioural context including athletes, educational and music, musical performance and achievement. In 2020, Status Sully stated that the four most influential traits include gender, height, skeletal muscle composition and VO2 max. In 2022, Dave stated that the nature side of the debate argues that ap athletic potential is solely determined by the instructions in each cell of our body that we can came from our genes. In fact, most of our visible physical traits manifest as a result of the interactions between multiple genes. He also shared that one common trait that can exemplify this is height. Studies suggest that up to 80% of our height is determined by genes you inherit from your parents. So we're now going to look at nurture. Nurture on the other hand is determined by the environment and how the athlete can potentially progress in that environment. This environment, environment tends to be in team based sports like football and rugby where the environment will constantly change. In 2009 Ross suggested that nurture, the notion that people are both champions or made into champions through hours and years of hard work. So looking at the early stages of na nature, is it from our DNA, is it inherited from our parents and nurture is something that we practice over and over again and equates to a lot of hard work. We're now going to look at the LTAD model which stands for the Long Term Athlete Development Model. The, LT the LTAD model has a big link influence on nature and nurture and this framework could both benefit and cause some problems for athletes who are on a talent pathway. Throughout the next couple of slides we're going to look at the differences between nature and nurture but how it can be affected by the LTAD model. The seven stages of the LTAD model include the first one an active start, second one fundamentals, the third learn to train, the fourth train to learn, the fifth train to compete, the sixth train to win and the seventh staying active for life. So in the next slide we're now going to look at how the LTAD model can affect nature versus nurture. Nature, by looking at the seven stages of learning, an athlete who may be described as a natural will potentially miss out on the first two stages due to already having the skill and ability within their pathway. This athlete may potentially start at stage five, which is training to compete due to already having the skill and ability and the skill level to exceed other performance. Nurture, by looking at the seven stages of learning, this athlete will start at stage one of the learning and work their way through the stages. This is because the environments may change and finding the best environment is essential for that athlete on the talent pathway. This athlete will most likely start at stage one to progress throughout all seven stages of the learning. And we're now going to look at an article that focus on the nature and the nurture side. Kenyan runners. So is running a natural sport for them or does the environment nurture they live in help with their success throughout their sports? In 2021, Browett completed an article about Kenyan dominance in distant, distance running. He explained many different factors that could determine why they have so much success in longer distance running events. Some of these examples include 
Many collegians run a lot at young age and often do this in barefoot. Collegians who grew up in a village would typically run to school and back twice a day because they would have to come back home for their lunch. Duties after finishing school, collecting water from the river and collecting firewood from the forest. And boys, when young, sometimes go rabbit hunting on weekends. So this will mean that they are running around all day. Due to these examples occurring on a day-to-day -day basis, Browick described in 2021 how because of this in their childhood, they build an aerobic base that is extremely strong. Another factor may include the climate. Kenya has a very warm climate and all year round will massively improve your aerobic performance. And this proves to us why they are so strong during longer distance races all across the world. Browick then went on to explain the environmental factors which help a Kenyan succeed. These can include the weather. The weather is comfortable throughout the year, almost always between 20 to 25 degrees Celsius with colder nights. This is perfect for their training. Lots of dirt roads, which are ideal for training. Many runners live and train at a high altitude, 2,000 to 4,000 meters. Research shows that the people who are born at the altitude have stronger lungs than people born at sea level. level. And also the typical Kenyan diet is healthy. It could be more diverse, but in general collegians, they eat very healthy. To conclude, Kenyan runners are so successful because due to all, the, all of these factors, they get a bigger advantage over a lot of different other participants. Coming from this country, they do, and training in a warmer climate and at a higher altitude gives them a massive advantage over the athletes from many other countries. To conclude over the nature and nurture argument, as we can see, many athletes work their way through the nurture process of looking to improve, building out all their, all their skills from scratch, where some athletes take the natural side from maybe the DNA, the inheritance, and this can also lead them onto a very strong talent pathway. So throughout my next video, we're going to focus on something that I think is so important and a really, really big factor that could affect an athlete's career talent pathway. And this is going to be the psychological factors that can affect a talent, pilot, a talent pathway. And we're going to explore this more within my next video.